Historically, the removal of failing dental implants was a very difficult and traumatic procedure, which required extensive amount of bone cutting around the implants. But no more. With the newer techniques, dental implants can now be removed using a unique, non-invasive, reverse torque technique in as little as five minutes. No incisions, no bone cutting, and no prolonged recovery. So why would a dental implant need to be removed? What is troughing technique? And why was it such a traumatic procedure? And what is reverse torque technique? And how does it work? In this part one of this episode, I will tell you all about that and more. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi, and welcome to Hints and Tips in Dentistry. Dental implants are now the standard of care for replacement of missing teeth, and they have a proven long-term success rate when done appropriately. However, there are circumstances where they need to be removed. Now let's take a look at indications of why a dental implant would have to be removed. There are commonly three indications for removal of a dental implant. The first is when there's an infection around an implant, a condition known as periimplantitis, which is an inflammatory process which progresses gradually to an infection, loss of bone, and compromise of the foundation of the implant. And in such cases, if it's not treated early, the implant typically has to be removed. The second indication for removal of the implant is when they are poorly positioned outside of the alignment with the plant restoration. And in such cases, the implant position is completely wrong and it will result in an anesthetic and a non-functional outcome and hence they're removed. The third indication for removal of implant is when there might be a fracture of the implant itself or if the retaining screw or the abutment that holds the restoration has been fractured and cannot be retrieved or retained. In that case, the implant is non-functional and non-restorable and may have to be removed. Now let's look at the old technique for removal of dental implants. This technique was known as troughing technique using special type of devices known as trephine burrs. These trephine burrs are rotary instruments that were essentially used to cut the bone around the implant in order to remove it. Unfortunately, it was a very traumatic procedure which required extensive amount of bone removal and uh, as a result it really destroyed the ridge and the architecture of the bone and left a quite a significant defect after it was done. The newer technique for removal of dental implants utilizes a technique known as reverse torque technique. And what this is, is utilizing a special device that engages the internal aspect of the implant. And by using a reverse rotation and load and force on the implant, the bond between the bone and the implant is disrupted and hence the implant is removed. This technique is non-traumatic. It requires no bone removal. And obviously, as a result, it helps to preserve the ridge and the underlying bone. And because of the fact that it is atraumatic and requires no significant surgical intervention, typically patients have no pain, there's no swelling, and quite a rapid healing after the procedure is performed. Now, how does this technique work? As we talked about, a special device is used to engage the internal aspect of the dental implant. And using the reverse torque, a specific controlled load on the implant, we can essentially break the bond between the bone and the implant, a process that we call osseointegration that essentially leads to the healing of the implant in bone. 
So in essence, we are breaking this mechanical bond between the implant and the bone, and we can uh, dislodge and remove the implant using this technique. Now let's take a look at an example of how this technique is used. Here's a patient who had a dental implant placed and restored, and unfortunately the implant was placed in an incorrect position, which resulted in a very unesthetic uh, outcome with a very long crown and recession of the gum tissue. When we look at the comb beam CT scan, it showed that the implant was placed way too outside of the alignment of the ridge and too much toward the outside toward the lip, hence creating the anesthetic result that we see here. So this patient, because of the anesthetic outcome of the uh, crown and the implant position, was essentially given an acrylic uh, device in order to camouflage. However, the patient was very unhappy with this result. Again, here's the implant, here's the restoration, and although it had integrated into the bone and healed perfectly, it was out of position. So the process involved first removal of the crown, which in this case was cemented in place. And now we look at the abutment. The abutment is the part that connects the restoration to the dental implant. In this case, it is retained by a single screw, which is easily removed by reversing it out of the abutment. Once the screw is loosened, the abutment complex comes out. And now we can see the dental implant. Again, perfectly healed in good bone, very healthy soft tissue. However, it was uh, malpositioned uh, and it could not be uh, treated otherwise. So for the removal, we're gonna place this special reverse torque technique device. It engages the internal aspect of the dental implant and using a very controlled reverse torque load, we create a, a debonding of the implant to the bone and the implant is gradually loosened and is removed. We can see that there is no incision involved in this technique. Typically after the implant is removed, we clean the site gently by curatage, removing any inflammatory tissues if present, wash the area with saline and clean it. And for the healing process, what can be very helpful is placement of a platelet-rich fibrin. Uh, this is a technique where we draw a couple of test tubes of blood from the patient. We centrifuge it to a concentrate of platelets which has a high content of growth factors and we can create a biological membrane that we can place into the socket and it helps with the maturation of the soft tissue and a faster healing. So the PRF membrane is placed we cover it with a uh, resorbable collagen material that's um, infused in the PRF or the platelet-rich fibrin as well. And we place a couple of sutures just to hold the membrane and the collagen um, membrane in place and just to stabilize it during the healing process. Again, no incision to uh, remove the implant and a very conservative technique to manage this uh, situation. Once the site heals, typically after about two or three months, then we can look at the uh, next step, which is evaluation of the bone and come up with a treatment plan for replacement of the implant uh, secondarily or in delayed fashion. So here's my tips for how to remove a dental implant with no incision and also no bone cutting. The first is important that we take a comb beam CT scan, a three-dimensional imaging, in order to assess the position of the implant and also its proximity to vital structures such as nerves or sinus, 
as well as adjacent teeth. So the proper diagnosis with CBCT is really important. The second is using a reverse torque technique. We no longer should place incisions and using trephine burrs to remove the implants. We can use the reverse torque technique to engage the implant and reverse it out of position. It's important that we select the right size, a right reverse torque adapter for the implant. There are different types of implant companies, different sizes, different architectures, and different designs. So in order to be successful with this technique, it's important to select the right adapter that fits that implant and can work uh, effectively. It's also important to use this technique using very limited amount of torque. It's important that we don't over torque because obviously any excessive force can result in fracture of the bone. So this is a controlled and limited amount of torque load that's placed on the implant during its removal. And there are some circumstances when we have implants in very dense bone, typically in the lower jawbone. And uh, because of that, the implant is highly, highly stable and it may not respond to the reverse torque technique initially. Hence, in those circumstances, it is possible to use a modified technique where we do a superficial bone removal about two to three millimeters at the top of the ridge to break the bond at the most uh, stable part of the implant integration uh, zone and then place the uh, reverse torque device which typically then works and the implant can be removed at that point. So if you have a dental implant that has to be removed for any reason, make sure to ask about reverse torque technique and avoid the old and very traumatic procedure that involved using trephine burrs and the troughing technique. Tune in to our second part of this episode as we answer the five most commonly asked questions about dental implant removal. Everything you wanted to know about this remarkable technique and more. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazami, and see you again soon on the next Hints and Tips in Dentistry.